Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about zero and negative exponents. All right, we're going to take a look at uh, some exponents here and see if we can discover a pattern about these exponents. First, let's look at 2 to the third power. Remember that means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 2 to the second power, 2 times 2, is 4. 2 to the first power just means one factor of 2, which is 2. All right, I'm going to try to use the pattern that's happening to figure out what in the world is 2 to the 0 power. So if I take a look at what is happening between the 8 to get to the 4, well, I know that if I take 8 divided by 2, I'll get 4. If I continue that pattern, 4 divided by 2, I will get 2. So, it would make sense if we take 2 divided by 2, we should get the next number in the pattern. That would be 1. Let's see if it works with the factors of 3 over here. 3 to the third power, 3 times 3 times 3, is 27. 3 squared, 3 times 3, is 9. And 3 to the first power, just one factor of 3, is 3. If I look at how do I go from 27 to get to 9, I'm dividing by 3. Again, 9 to get to 3, 9 divided by 3 will give me 3. So to figure out 3 to the 0 power, it looks like we should be able to take 3 divided by 3, we'll get 1. If we take a look at this pattern, it seems to me that anything to the 0 power will give me 1. Let's take a look at another way to prove this using the quotient rule. If I have 4 to the third power divided by 4 to the third power, already having learned the quotient rule, since these are the same base number of 4, I should be able to take the exponents and subtract them. 4 to the 3 minus 3 power is equal to 4 to the 0 power, which we just said should be equal to 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Now if I take a look at this again, 4 to the third power divided by 4 to the third power. If I take any number and divide it by itself, I get 1. 4 to the third power, remember that means 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Over 4 times 4 times 4, which is again 64. 64 divided by 64 is 1. If I take a look at 7 divided by 7, I know it's 1. If I take a look at negative 2 divided by negative 2, I know it's 1. So, anytime I'm taking a number and dividing it by itself, even if that number is an exponential number, same number, 4 to the 3rd, divided by itself, 4 to the 3rd, will give me 1. Let's make sure we write the zero exponent rule into our notes. This rule states that any quantity to the zero power is always equal to one. All right, so when we looked at this pattern with the twos, we were noticing that we were dividing by two over and over again to keep our pattern going and 2 divided by 2 gave us 1 to the 0 power. So what if we kept going and our exponent kept getting lower and now we're dealing with negative exponents? It would make sense that we should be able to continue our pattern of dividing by 2 to find the next term, which would mean 2 to the negative 1 power would be equal to 1 divided by 2, which is 1 half. If I want to keep that pattern going, 
1 half divided by 2 will be equal to 1 fourth. Keeping that pattern going again, 1 fourth divided by 2 gives me 1 eighth. Okay, if I look at that pattern again with the threes, I remember that we were dividing by 3 to continue our pattern in the threes. And if I want to extend that, 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. 1 third divided by 3 is 1 ninth. 1 ninth divided by 3 is 1 27th. When I look at my extension of my pattern, I'm noticing that if I rewrite, let's take for example 2 to the negative 2. We said that that was equal to 1 fourth by extending our pattern. But another way of looking at that is 1 over 2 squared. Okay, I know 2 squared is 4, so 1 over 2 squared is equal to 1 fourth. 2 to the third power, I'm sorry, 2 to the negative third power is equal to 1 over 2 to the third power. 2 to the third power is 8, so 1 over 2 to the third is equal to 1 eighth. If I think about that pattern as a general rule, I'm taking 1 over my base number that has a negative exponent, moving it to the denominator and giving it a positive exponent. In my last slide, 2 to the negative 3 power was equal to 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1 eighth. m to the negative ninth power would be equal to 1 over m to the positive ninth power. So please write the negative exponent rule in our notes. The negative exponent rule says a to the negative n power will always be equal to 1 over a to the positive n power. So when we change it to that 1 over, that negative exponent will become a positive exponent in the denominator. All right, we're going to do some examples, and these examples should be in your notes that you'll be checking in with your teacher. Okay, our first example, 4 to the negative 3 power. Okay, I just have one base number with one negative exponent. That's going to be equal to 1 over 4 to the positive third power. If our exponent is applied to a number, we can always evaluate that. That'll give me 1 over 4 times 4 times 4, which is 1 over 64. Okay, example 2 for your notes. c to the negative 12 power. Well, this is an easy one if we're following that same pattern. 1 over c to the positive 12 power. Done. Okay, example 3. Please write this one down. I'm going to point out something here. I do have a negative exponent. My problem is 2m to the negative 4. There's no parenthesis here. That means that negative 4 exponent is only attached to the term that it immediately follows. So that m is the only thing that has a negative 4 attached to it. So that means I'm going to have 2 times 1 over m to the fourth. Okay, let's remember that 2 can be written as 2 over 1. Now I'm going to multiply these terms together. Numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. My answer is going to be 2 over m to the fourth. All right, let's take a look at example 4. This problem looks like a simple quotient rule problem. Okay, I have the same base number. I'm going to subtract my exponents. 
Okay, however, when I do 2 minus 6, I'm going to get 3 to the negative 4. Now when we're evaluating exponents, we never want to leave a negative exponent in our final answer. So using the rule that we just talked about today, we're going to change 3 to the negative 4 to 1 over 3 to the positive 4. Since this is a numerical exponent, we can evaluate that and we'll get 1 over 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is equal to 81. There's our answer. All right, let's take a look at example 5. Please write this down in your notes. I'm going to show you a little bit of a shortcut of how we can handle these negative exponents. So, I don't know if your parents have ever said to you, you have a negative attitude. And when they say that, they don't mean it as a good thing. They mean it's a bad thing. Okay, and they tell you you should have a more positive attitude. That's how I feel about exponents. Negative exponents are bad. You always want to turn them into a positive. The shortcut is instead of always writing those negative exponents as 1 over, I like to think about them in terms of fractions as they're going to move to the other location. So this negative exponent is in the numerator. I'm going to move that to the denominator and drop the negative in my exponent. 9 doesn't have an exponent attached to it, so 9 is going to stay in the numerator. y to the fifth, which is in our denominator, has a positive exponent, so that guy stays where he's at. y to the negative 3 has a negative exponent. He's going to move to the denominator and have a more positive exponent. Now I can apply my rule of y to the fifth times y to the third in the denominator will give me y to the eighth and then we are done. Okay, last example. Okay, I'm going to apply that shortcut and I'm going to identify all of my negative exponent terms right from the bat, right from the get-go here. And I'm going to move them to the opposite location. When I move them to the opposite location, they will then have positive exponents. So, 2 to the positive fourth will move to the denominator. m squared gets moved. n to the fourth stays on top. Doesn't have to move because that guy has a positive exponent. Now, my 6, my m, and my n to the tenth all stay in the denominator because they do not have any negative exponents attached to them. Remember, m by itself can also be written as m to the first. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate the stuff in the denominator. 2 to the fourth power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's going to be 16. 16 times 6 will give me 96. Those guys are taken care of. Okay m to the second power times m to the first power will give me m to the third power and last but not least n to the tenth will stay n to the tenth in my denominator. In the numerator I do still have n to the fourth power. I'm going to put it over here so I can line up my n's because they really are the last thing I need to take care of. Okay, I know that n to the 4th divided by n to the 10th really means n to the 4 minus 10 power. That's going to give me 96 m to the 3rd in my denominator and n to the negative 6. All right, if I use my shortcut and take that negative exponent, move them to the opposite location and drop the negative in the exponent, my final answer will be 1, because there's always a factor of 1, even when we cancel out all of our factors, over 96 m to the third n to the sixth. And we're done.